Hi folks, we're gonna be doing another YouTuber's t-shirt today, so come along for the ride. Right, we've got another YouTuber. I've done one of the t-shirts for him and uh, we're gonna do a different color one now. We're gonna be using the same graphics that I created in our Silhouette Studio software and all I've basically done was curve the text and put a, a silhouette image of a tractor and then put some little writing underneath it. Let me just show you what I've done. So there you go, nice and straightforward this one. Right, as you can see there, I've got three separate images. I've got the writing, I've got a tractor and I've got this writing down here. And you can click on each one of these respectively. That's the first one there, as you can see. The middle one is the tractor. And then we've got the, the bottom one there. Now, it can be a little bit awkward to line stuff up if you've got them all separate like I have. So all I tend to do is literally just draw a box around all of them till they're all highlighted. All three of them like that by holding the left mouse button down and just clicking till you're covering everything. And then go on the image and right click and then click group. That now puts them all as one item. As you can see now, if I move everything, everything moves as one. So if you're lining stuff up, that's the way you really want to do it. You can always click on it again, and then click ungroup if you want it to separate them all again. And then they will all separate into their own individual items there, as you can see, if I needed to alter the writing, for example. So that's how you do that. So I'm just gonna group them together again. So I know that all the spaces between them are all exactly the same, so that's fine. So we got that now. So as I said, I've done this in a, a, a high visibility vinyl, and all I'm gonna do now is just change the color of the vinyl. Now, I've got a couple here, and I just wanted to bring this one out, because this is a, a thicker vinyl, this one. It's a sort of a flecky, sort of a sparkly one. Now, this is where you normally have to play about with your settings, for example. I know we've got the settings in the Cameo. If we come back over to the Cameo now, if I click the Send button there, we got the uh, the actual, I've got it set for heat transfer smooth uh, one I've put, um, I'll actually increase the speed or the force, I can't remember now which it was, and I'll actually include two passes on tricky vinyls like that. So all I would do, as I say, would do the test cut first by doing test, and that just cuts out a little square image on the corner of the, uh, the top of the transfer paper, and then see if you can weed it out correctly. Now, if you can't weed it out correctly, don't worry about it. Just increase either the force or the actual blade, the cutter blade, depending on what Cameo you've got. I've got a Cameo 2. I think the Cameo 3 has an auto blade adjuster, and that just you hear, click, 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 or whatever. I haven't got that here. All I've got is a Cameo 2, so I can increase it manually by literally undoing the blade, taking it out, and then increasing the number around there by putting it in there and clicking that. This is a Cameo 2, Cameo 3 has an auto blade. So you might have to adjust the blade in the actual software itself, as I say so, but I haven't got to do that. And make sure you can weed it out correctly and leave the little triangle in the middle of it uh, when you come to weed out, and then you know you're, you're, you're gonna be cutting out correctly. Also, with these speciality vinyls, you will find them very temperamental if you're using small text. So my advice is don't use these speciality vinyls for really small text. Keep them for your big, bold T-shirt graphics and all that. You don't want to be writing uh, small writings out with stuff like this because it's, it's a devil's own job to weed it out. So anyway, that's speciality vinyls. So what I'm going to do now is literally cut out on just a, a, an aluminum screen uh, standard vinyl. So I'm using the cutter's settings that I've already got set up here. And again, just going to load it in the uh, Silhouette Cameo. Again, don't forget, I buy these in sheets of 330 millimeters, and they, they're they ideal for literally just sliding into the Cameo and then clicking the Load Media button. So all I'm gonna do is just cut this out quickly now, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, that's, uh, that's cut out now, so let's just unload that, put that to one side. Now what I will show you here is also that on this graphic here, we, although this is all one color, as you know, the YouTube logo has got a little red background on it. So what I've actually done off the page there, I've actually got that little TV screen, call it that, and I can bring that on the page at any time and cut that out. So what I would do in this case, because it's off the page, if it's off the page, it won't actually cut. So if you've got any graphic here which you don't want cut, as I say, now I've cut this out on the green paper, I want to bring this on now and then cut it out on the red paper. So all I'll do is I would click on the item, don't forget I've grouped them all together, 
and then just literally just slide that off the page. Hold the left mouse button down and just bring it off the page like that and leave it there. And then get the little one or the other color, whatever you want to do to bring on the page. And then you'd put that on the page like that. Position it where you want it, obviously. Now I wouldn't necessarily just cut one out there because I'd have all this as a waste. So I would just right click and do copy and then paste. And as you can see, I can line a whole row of them up there and then just paste again. And as you can see, that pastes another one there. And I'm just doing this rough at the moment. Paste. And as you can see, I can get a whole row of them. So what I would do then, you could group them if you want or leave them as they are. And then all I would do is I'd put me red paper uh, vinyl in the machine and then I would just literally just cut these out. And then I know I've got a row of them already cut out for the next time I need a t-shirt. So that's what I would do there. Because I don't really need to save that as it is, when I close that up, it will ask me if I want to save the change. I've just made changes to this, which I don't want to make. So just click no and everything will shut up back to normal. So there you can see. So when I just open it up again, because I didn't save any of them moving about changes I've done. I should open up Silhouette Cameo with the original graphics uh, that I started off with, which I'd already originally created. This is version 4.1, by the way, as you saw that. And as you can see, there's my original graphic there, and that's back in its original place, sitting off the side. So that's where I was, and that's exactly as I saved it the first time I created the graphic. So any moving about you do, just don't save the changes if you don't like the changes or if you don't need the changes, and it will always resort back to your original graphic, which is the one that you saved in the first place. Right, so I've cut this, I'm gonna cut this out now and weed it out. I've already got some of them little background, little red TVs to go beyond on YouTube, because I did that the last time I created one of these t-shirts, so let's go and weed this out. Right, okay, there we go. That's the uh, graphic now, as you can see. Now, as you can realize there, we've got to put the uh, YouTube with the red backing on it. So I've got some of these already made up here, as you can see, so I always keep some of them. And we've got to actually put that on the T-shirt when we do the initial press, as you can see, to look something like that when we finish it. So that's what we've got to do there. And all I'll do, I'll line it up on the T-shirt, and then, as I say, we'll line the red one up underneath and then we'll cut the word tube out because we've got to lay the word tube on second and that's what i'm going to do now but first of all press the shirt as you know what we always do we always uh get the moisture out first it really surprises me every time that i do press these these shirts feel dry when you uh you first put them under here and don't forget they're stored inside they're not stored outside it's a centrally heated house and the amount of moisture that you can actually feel in these so that is a, a big issue if you, as I say, if, if you've got problems with your t-shirts, graphics, especially with vinyls sticking to your t-shirts, or not sticking to them rather, it could be that you're not doing a pre-press and getting the moisture out because that steam would stop the transfers from sticking. It's exactly the same if you was using a steam iron. They tell you to, if you're, if you're applying those iron-on transfers, they tell you not to use the steam facility on the irons exactly for the same reason. So never use... Uh, a moist t-shirt and always do the pre-press first of all to get rid of that moisture and your transfers or vinyl should stick fine then there we go that's all nicely pressed now and don't forget we're going to find the center by folding it in half as you probably know take a bit of time to get this right as i say most t-shirts are different in the way that they're manufactured or made and sometimes they're not always very even so as long as you're lining up along the top there correctly and then making sure that they fall in a straight line, both parallel with each other, you know you've found the centre of the T-shirt. There we go. Because literally every, everything depends on that. It sounds like common sense really, but it's amazing how many people, like me when I first started, I had the tape measure out and I was measuring and sometimes you can't get it level. And it's all trial and error until you find a system, which is what I found here and I've passed it on to you lot obviously that you can get a central line down it, that simply. And no more measuring needed there, I can see that straight away. So anyway, let's pull this to one side, get our t-shirt laying down flat. Again, with our central line, and as I said to you, the only thing you really want to measure, if you're doing many, many of these for someone, 
is to um, measure how far down you want the graphic to start. Now I'm just using the lint roller here because there is a few little hairs on it and you can't help that in some cases. And you don't want them to get trapped underneath uh, the, the vinyl when you, before you put the vinyl down. So all I'm going to do here now is literally just to find the centre of this graphic by you know how, by folding it in half. I'm lining the mylar up along the top as I normally do till the ends of the letters and then I'm folding it as you know keeping everything still and all the way down the centre because we want this hanging straight and that's our straight line which is going to line up exactly with the centre of our t-shirt graphic. Now as I said to you we've got a different colour here as well so we know that we've got to slide it underneath the YouTube logo first of all and I've cut the mylar very close to where it needs to go and literally this is an iron up this is the only bit of iron up you've got to do and you can normally tell with the straight line underneath going to the straight line of the mylar there so I'm happy with that so I can press that down now knowing I'm pressing the one underneath down now don't forget you've got your double sided your, your heat tape here so I'm just going to lift that up and I want that to stay in place so I will take this one down there we go, so that's that now. And I'm going to actually put a couple of bits of paper, uh, sticky tape rather, just around here as well, just to make sure that our image doesn't move as well. Again, that's why it's handy having this heat tape. You can't always rely on the stickiness of the uh, the Mylar carrier sheet to hold it onto a garment. Cover up with our silicon sheet. And I'm going to be pressing that for our mandatory 20 seconds with this type of vinyl uh, at 165 degrees centigrade. Right, so now we've got that pressed and I took the word tube off, now we've got to put the word tube back on again. So let me just position that. Again, this is an iron up per thing. Keep all your lines straight and it makes that a whole lot easier to do. So I've now got to put this again under the press. Now again, I'm not too worried about pressing the whole lot again. But just make sure you put your cover sheet on. And everything should be okay. Down again, exactly the same time. It don't matter, it don't affect the vinyl, not in this case anyway, not with these vinyls I'm using. But uh, do check with the supplier to find out if you can or can't double press them like I'm doing here. And also check with your supplier that your vinyls, you can layer them as well. Not all of them you can. There we go, turn that off. Take that off. I'll bring it back over here. And all I've got to do then is literally just press the word chew, take that off there. And as you can see here, my word hasn't stuck. Now, this, I'm glad this has happened because I'm going to show you the reason why that hasn't stuck. On the surface here, sometimes when you peel some backing papers off, not on this one, but on the red one, for example, I've had this before with red ones, it leaves a sticky residue. Now, that sticky residue is, again, the thing, it's like a glue, but it's the wrong glue. It's the, the glue on the other side. It's like a releasing glue, so to speak, and that's what's exactly stopping the actual garment the, uh, the 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 uh, vinyl from checking. So what that's got to do, I've got to clean that with a soapy solution. So I'm going to just clean this now and get that off. So this is something you could come uh, come up against. So all I'm literally going to do is clean that off now. You shouldn't have to do this, but some vinyls are like this. Just something to be aware of. It might be because it's an old vinyl, but just something you should be aware of that could happen. And this could be one of the reasons why you're not uh, your vinyls aren't sticking. Now, as you can probably see there, that residue is now gone. It's dry, and that's a normal vinyl we got there. So we're going to repress now, and I'm going to be brave. I'm going to use the original sticker, which we did have that vinyl on, just to show you that it can get away with it. There we go. So this time, we've cleaned it, and that's the only thing we've done. We've got that residue off of that uh, vinyl. I'm going to cover it up again. I'm going to pre-press that again. So technically speaking, this is the third time I've pressed it. There we go. Turn that off. Remove that. And what we should find now, if I bring this back over here, that should now stick, which it has, as you can see. So that, I'm glad that happened because that's just showing you an issue we had, which you could have, 
And as you can see now, that is actually stuck on there, not a problem whatsoever. It was that residue which was causing the vinyl not to stick. So there we go. That's just a, a little problem there, which you, you, you only know that through experience. And you wouldn't know that. That was that vinyl there. That looks okay, look. But it was, it's this actual cover when you peel that off and it leaves sticky residue actually on the vinyl. I don't know whether that's because it's old vinyl or not. I have had it before with red vinyls. I don't know why, but I seem to have only had it with red vinyls. So even me, I still have problems, as I say, but you've got to know how to come overcome them. There you go. There's our Malk of Lincoln t-shirt uh, ready for the, the YouTuber. And uh, there you go. Just one of the little problems. I'm glad that happened. I didn't plan for that to happen. It did happen. And I've shown you how you overcome it. But it's something I should have been aware of when I actually put the vinyl on. I did notice it was a bit sticky, but I thought it might have been all right. But obviously it wasn't. And that's why I didn't edit it out and uh, leave that out of the video. I've shown you it because you might come across the same thing as well. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little video. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to look at my other YouTube videos. And also check out my training DVDs as well, which I'll put a link in the description below the video. And I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.